so in the religious science, which is what we practice, we call it the science of mind and spirit, but the actual religious term for it is religious science, but we call ourselves religious scientists. I don't too much go for that, but because <laughs> that's one of the reasons they changed the name to Center for Spiritual Living is because nobody liked the word religious and nobody liked the word science. Well, now that would change today <laughs> because everybody likes the word science. Not everybody, but most people like the word science. Anyway, the point I'm getting to is that we're known for um, manifesting parking spots. <laughs> we can all, it's a big joke in, in, in our teaching that you know we can manifest parking spots. And my daughter, I remember um, once, and actually every time I'm with her, my youngest daughter, and we were at the zoo on this particular day, and she was like, um, we couldn't find a parking spot. And so she's like, Mom, come on. <laughs> do your thing, that thing you do, and we need a parking spot. Anyway, so anyway, of course, in my mind, I did a very short spiritual mind treatment, and a parking spot showed up right away. And then she looked at me, and she went, boy, it's in the shade, too. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So what's that all about? So what it was about for me in that moment and what it's about sometimes a lot, actually a lot of times, is that when we put a, a demand on the universe, it meets the demand. It has to. And that demand in that day wasn't a really about a parking spot. It was that I want to take my grandkids to the zoo and I need a place to park because I'm not going to be able to take them if they don't. So it was all about the love and the getting, getting my kids to the zoo, getting my grandkids to the zoo. So love propels that energy, that source within us into manifestation. It's actually the only thing that does is love, and no matter what's going on. So I looked up the definition of miracle, you know, the miracle of parking spots. No, uh, a surprising and welcome event that is not expl explained by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. Now, I think that definition is pretty archaic nowadays. If you listen to it, a surprising and welcome event that is not explained by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of, of the divine agency. So I took out some words and I put a welcome event that is explained by natural or scientific laws and is con that is that it, it is explained by, uh, by scientific and natural laws. It's a welcome event explained by scientific and natural laws. Because we know enough now to know that scientifically miracles are possible all the time as we place our intention with feeling into, this, into the field of energy, what happens? It seems like a miracle, but it's really not. It's really like I like to call them normicals. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, like last night we had an issue going on that was very, very dramatic. And everybody was trying to fix it in the world of form and figure out what to do next. And, and, and I was even going to do something in the world of form to, to figure out, make it, make it happen. But instead, we did a spiritual mind treatment. And <coughs> I'm going to tell you, in every situation, like I said at the beginning of this, if you want a miracle, it has to be propelled by love. Even if you're looking at the most you know, atro atrocity, it has to be propelled by love. Even if you're dealing with something you don't like and you just want to send something to that person, you can't have a miracle if it's not propelled by love. So we did a treatment. And... The situation was resolved really quickly. I mean, like, like that. And so the person called me and asked me if I had made a certain phone call. And I said, no, I just, Patrick and I just did a spiritual mind treatment. And she just went, oh, I see. <laughs> anyway, and then she went on with her conversation. But this is the thing. It's just like, <sighs> we are the miracle. We are the miracle. But... We have to be aligned with the force of energy, the love, so that there's no separation. So Ernest Holmes wrote, to the average person, when a result is obtained by this method of work, he's talking about spiritual mind treatment, it looks as though a miracle has happened. But such is not the case. 
It is only a miracle as everything else in life is a miracle. A definite conscious idea has been set in motion in the subjective world, which is the subconscious world, the world of the field, the energy, whatever you want to call it, which accepts the ideas at their own valuation and acts upon it. So you're setting it in motion all the time. We're constantly setting it in motion, this, this, this energy, this source, and we're setting it in motion about how, we, how we're feeling. And, it, and something happens and it seems like it's spontaneous, but in reality, a spontaneous miracle or remission or whatever you want to call it, in reality, it's that alignment that is so in tune that there's no separation between us, the manifestation, God, whatever you want to call it. There's no separation. We just know that we are. And, you know, everybody always talks about Anita Marjani, right? If you know who she is, she, she um, wrote a book called um, Dying to Be Me. That's right. And she was, she was dying. She had already gone to a coma. Her body was filled with tumors. She was gone. Her family came to stand around her, if you don't know the story, ready to say goodbye to her. And while she was in this coma, she met with her dad on the other plane. And there was all this forgiveness that happened and this love. And, and she knew she had to come back because she had to tell people they could do that while they were while they were alive and that was her mission to come back to be able to do that and so she came back the tumors disappeared within three weeks and she was whole well what was that that was love it was love and we were talking about this with dr peggy in the office before there isn't always like a physical healing in that case there was because she needed to come back and she wanted definitely there was there was a definite what I said in that quote, you know, connection, mind, spirit, God, and an and a, and a, and a intention to come back that was very important. It wasn't her will trying to come back. She just knew she had to come back and it was all lined up. So it's love that's, that brought her back. So there's nothing that could actually be beyond, like Ernest Holmes says, that the word incurable well, he doesn't say this. It comes from the, the, root, the root of the Latin root of incurable is, um, is not cared for. And everything can be cared for. Everything. So it is impossible to say something is not curable. It's just impossible. It's not. That's not such a thing. And yet, you know, we are finding that out now. But we have to create a mental equivalent of whatever it is, which means that we're equal to it and, and we embody it. So there is a point... In the supreme moment of realization, this is how he further explains it, Ernest, Dr. Holmes, where the individual merges with the universe, this is what I was trying to say to you before, where the oneness of all life so enters his being that there is no sense of otherness. <sighs> Have we felt that at times? We feel it in meditation. I'm sure everybody in this room has felt that. There's no sense of otherness. It is here that the mentality performs seeming miracles because there is nothing to hinder the whole from coming through because our innate beingness, no matter what it is in our life, if it's our financial life, our health life, or our wanting of a home, a job, any of it, it's, it's, it's that wholeness coming through because innately we are whole. We're always whole. The practitioner knows that there's nothing ever, ever, ever to heal because... All you're doing is revealing God. That's all. Revealing God in the person. The wholeness. God, whatever you want to call it. I don't like the word God. Wholeness. Love. You're revealing it. So we are the miracle. And um, there's a quote that I love from, I'm really on Ernest Holmes today. He says, our prayers do nothing to change God because God can't change. Prayers change us. Prayers change us. So spiritual mind treatment changes our mind, our consciousness, not God's consciousness. Well, we are God, but not any outside being that's, it's always whole. So in this case, everything would have to be a miracle because we, I mean, the same power that opens a rosebud, the same power that that, that raises the sun and, 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 and keeps the stars in balance. Is our, it's us. We're not separate from that. So I'm just, I'm just knowing. And like in the song that, um, that, that Sharon sang, where there you know, is, a be is a beseeching in a way of, of making somebody make this happen for me, Santa Claus or God. But in reality, we're the ones 
We're the ones that have to make it happen. We're the ones that have to align ourselves in the wholeness and so that, you know, and the peace and, and sending out that peace and that love so that, so that the world can shift and the world can change. And going back to the parking lots, <laughs> I think the miracles of finding parking spots. I think sometimes our lives are like that. We're driving around a parking lot looking for something to help us. <laughs> Where is it? Who's going to do this for me? Where am I going to find the right cure? When am I going to find the right medicine? When am I going to find the right... What if you always had the right cure and always had the right medicine and you went at it that way? You always had the right... Um, whatever it is we needed, the right doctor to show up if it's a doctor or uh, that you always had it and you always... That's, that's what it's talking about, not driving aimlessly around the parking lot, you know, having an intention, setting it in motion with a feeling of love, and it, as Dr. Peggy said, putting your, don't look at the outcome the way you think it's going to be, because <laughs> it, it's, we always say this or better, DJ says that one in our practitioner class, she always closes her treatments with this or something better. And something better isn't always what we think something better looks like, but it's always going to be something better because we are on a road of, of evolution in our own lives. We're on a journey that has a lot of twists and turns in it. But if we can know that we're always divinely guided, guarded, protected, and we can look for the miracles coming from ourselves as we move out and have that intention, everything will shift. It, it does. It shifts. And I love this because I hope I put that quote in here. Oh, please tell me I did. did. I did? did. All right. <laughs> it's a miracle. I might have to go back. Anyway, um, what it said was this. I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, here it is. Uh, it's because I didn't have it highlighted in, in yellow. And thank you for that, Patrick. Because right it was right in front of me. See, the miracle was right in front of me. See, I just demonstrated what I'm talking about. Okay. Wow. He says, so we feel like we have to taste it and feel it. And if we can't, but Ernest Holmes, and I like this because it really helps me in certain times, and I think it should help all of us. Sometimes we think we're trying to taste it and we're feeling it and we have to know and be there before it happens. And sometimes we just can't, we can't necessarily get there right away. But it says, if we can't move ourselves that far, because sometimes we can't, we have to just trust and take a leap of faith in the unseen. So if we can't get ourselves to like, oh, I can feel it now. Oh, I got this, whatever it is. I'm, 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 I'm totally healthy. Can we take a leap of faith and trust in the unseen? Can we, can we know that our life is always unfolding? for our highest good at all times and divine action is always in place no matter what it looks like and that we're in eternal can we take that leap of faith as we as we walk this this amazing like plane of existence the material world wow anyway right so i found this little the thing and i'm going to close with it i found it remember the um his name is jackson kittard he wrote this i prayed for a change so I changed my mind. I prayed for guidance and learned to trust myself. I prayed for happiness and realized I am not my ego. Love that one. I prayed for peace <laughs> and learned to accept others unconditionally. Mm, wouldn't that be price? I prayed for abundance and realized my doubt kept it out. I prayed for wealth and realized it is my health. Hmm. I prayed for a soulmate and realized I'm the one. I prayed for love and realized it's always knocking, but I have to allow it in. And in this case, I have to allow it to arise within me. I prayed for a miracle and realized I am the miracle. Let's just say it one more time. I am the miracle. Hmm. Namaste.